Hello, students. Welcome to the first video in Poppleton Science class. Um, depending on which class you are, it doesn't really matter because this video is for all of you guys. The first video I'm going to be doing here is not actually a content video on the class, but just an overall general understanding on how to use Schoology. So I call it Schoology 101 for Poppleton Science. Now, I know that many of you probably already know how to use Schoology, but this video is to really teach you how to use Schoology specifically for my class because te different teachers do different things. Some teachers just throw content in there uh, as kind of just an external resource. But in my class, we use Schoology almost every day, and I want to show you how to be using it and using it and utilizing it properly. So if you look here, I'm already at the Schoology homepage. I just want to let you know that I went to um, centennial.schoology.com. You could go directly to just schoology.com, and I know a lot of you do. However, a little trick, if you go to centennial.schoology.com, it actually saves you a step. Um, you don't have to type in the school uh, ID. In fact, if you look right here, the school ID is already administrated there for you. So I went to centennial.schoology.com, and then I typed in my username and password. So just to give you an example of a username, yours will look a little bit different than mine here. Your username is specified by first putting the graduation year, the year that you're going to graduate, just a two-digit number. Then you're going to do the first five letters of your first name, and then the first five letters of your last name, and that's your username. Then the next thing is your password. Now, I can't help you with your password. Usually at the beginning of the year, you set your password, or there is a general password. Uh, if you need help with that, you're welcome to contact your teacher um, or the IT administration. So that is how you get into Schoology. So I'm going to go ahead and just log in here and just kind of teach you a little bit about what's going on. So for those who are familiar with Schoology, the first thing you're usually faced here, and this is true for the mobile app as well, is the recent activity section. So my recent activity is pretty full. I'm, I'm subscribed to a lot of groups and different things. Yours might not be so full, uh, which is kind of nice, but this is kind of an area for your teachers or your administrators to post things, uh, kind of like a Facebook feed that you can see really easily. It's also a quick area to see your upcoming events, uh, if you have events for your different classes, but I'll talk about that a little bit more. What you want to do right now is find the courses tab. Again, if you're following along in a mobile app, it might be on the left side, but here I'm just on the online version. I will show you a little bit from the mobile app a little bit later. But find your courses. You'll have a slew of courses if you're signed up for them in your courses section. Find the appropriate course and go ahead and click on it. Again, this is just a general course, and I'm doing this for all of my classes, so this may not look exactly like yours, but the kind of the outline is the same. As you start off at my course or in my course um, class Schoology page, uh, I set up all my classes very similar to one another. The first thing I want to note is over on the right side is this upcoming area. Here I like to post, if possible, you know, when certain things are due. For example, the lab notebook might be due on a certain day or a test might be upcoming. So I'll post those things as much as possible in the upcoming tab. Um, next, I want to show you all these materials you have here, uh, just kind of one by one go through them to show you why they're there, why they're important, and how they could be useful for you. So the first one at the very top is the course resources folder, and I'm going to go ahead and jump in there. Now the course resources folder is very useful to you. It's, it's just a section to hold content that's useful throughout the entire course. So here are a few examples of things that might be um, in the course resources folder. Again, yours might look a little bit different, but these are some example resources that I throw in there. Uh, the first one is the syllabus. If you click on that, it will actually take you to the syllabus for the class. So here's the concepts chemistry syllabus. Uh, yours might be a completely different syllabus. Uh, another thing that you might see is a class calendar. Um, and this, I just want to point out, so I'll go ahead and click it. This class calendar is kind of just, um, it's, it's changeable. It, it's not absolute um, until it's happened. So, for example, you can see here that, uh, you know, some days are missing, uh, certain things, so it only goes up so far. It kind of just gives you a quick snapshot on what happened before and what could be coming up. This is the calendar. I'll let you know this is the calendar that I use when I plan each of my classes, so you have direct access to that calendar. So I'm changing it, sometimes I'm changing it um, the night before, sometimes I'm changing it the minute before class, sometimes I'm changing it the day after, but just to give you a snapshot of what's coming up, that's here. Um, each of these things are clickable, 
So if you click on them, they'll give you more information. Uh, you don't really need to worry about when. That's just telling you the date, Jan Wednesday, January 21st. That's today. Um, the description usually I post in kind of an outline of what's going on that day. So for this class, I think it's physical science. Um, we are finishing up the speed challenge lab as well as working as talking about Schoology login. Hey, that's what we're doing right now. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and go back. So up here at the very top, if you're using the web version, you can kind of see the cookie crumbs. I'm in the class as well as the folder. I'm going to go ahead and just click on that folder or you can click the back button. Um, so here's some other things from that course resources folder. Quickly, two other things. This e-textbook, I've posted a link to an online version of a textbook. This isn't the same as the physical textbook, which I'll talk about in a minute, but it is an online textbook. So if you hate taking textbooks around, but you like to read a textbook, I have posted that resource in here. So I'll go ahead and click that. It's gonna take me to this website called CK12. Now, it's gonna ask you to create um, a username and password, which actually you don't need to create account because at Centennial, you have a, a Google account. And because you have a Google account, you could just sign in using Google. Now, the first time you click this, it's gonna open up a pop-up window and ask you to sign in with your credentials. I've already done that, so I don't need to. You just click accept, and it will take you right in. And here's the textbook. This works really great on a device, and what's really cool about it is it's updatable. I can update it really quickly. Notice it says created by and edited by me. But you can come in here and actually click and read different aspects of things for the class. And it's a really great resource because it's, it's a digital textbook, it's not a flat textbook. All right, going back to the course resources page, um, here is answers to selected practice problems. Um, some students who find themselves struggling doing some of the problems in class, because there will be you know, math problems or other chemical equation problems, for certain practice problems or worksheets, I post answers or selected answers online because some students like to check their work and make sure that's there. So come check this if you want to know whether you're doing great on some of the practice assignments. All right, I'm going to go ahead and go back a page. So this is, again, the main page. Now, these next slew of folders here are the unit folders. So these unit folders, the class is divided up into certain units. So we covered main, kind of broad topics. Now, these units aren't labeled, uh, but they would be labeled with the overall broad topic of what we're talking about. I want to point out that one of these has a must complete rule, which I'll talk about a little bit. But really quickly, this is just telling you that there's something in here that you need to do, and I'm checking to make sure you did it. Uh, I'll show you where that is in just a minute. So these folders, by the way, they only appear as we go throughout the class. So for you right now, you'll probably only see the unit one folder. But as we go along, when we complete unit one, the unit two folder will appear, and then the unit three folder will appear. So you only really need to worry about, if you're following along with the class dutifully, you only really need to worry about whatever the lowest folder is. Uh, they are color-coded for fun. Sometimes I match the, the papers I hand out with the, with the folders themselves but that's just about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and go in the first overall unit. So here's unit one. So again, this is a broad topic. Now because it's such a broad topic, I've divided the unit down into lessons. So here are the different lessons. Here's unit one, lesson one, and it's about atoms. Here's unit one, lesson two, and it's about a periodic, the periodic table. Here's unit one, lesson three, and it's about chemical bonding. So these are the different lessons in the unit, um, and each lesson has a different learning targets or a set of learning targets that you really need to know. Before I get into those lessons folders, I'm going to start at the top. Uh, I usually in Schoology start at the top. If you ever want to go, it's always top down chronologically. This very first thing here is the table of contents. So it says unit five table contents. It should say unit one. I just copied this from a different unit. But here, if you click on that, um, if you're using the lab notebooks in my class, which you should be, most of my classes are, this is where you would see that table of contents to tell you which page things go on in your lab notebook and where they are. So that's that. So I'm going to go back. Um, the next thing here is, like I said, lesson one, lesson two, lesson three, as well as the test area. So I'm going to go in and delve in a unit. Notice it said there's something in here that I must complete. So I'm going to go into the lesson one. So here's the first lesson. So in these lessons, lessons are have certain things that you might really want in them. So first of all, and this is 
kind of one of the reasons I'm doing this video is to point out that here's lesson 1.1 resources. So these resources or this folder has a whole bunch of really useful resources in it um, that I'll talk about in just a minute. Inside the lesson itself has the different activities and practice problems and assignments that we did in class. So in the lesson folder, if you're wondering where all the material is, this is where that material is. So for example, here is a practice. This is where you would get the problems to write down in your notebook. Here's a couple of labs that we did in class. So you can actually click on these and it takes you to the content that you would need to set up in your lab notebook or in class. So here for a lab, for example, here's the purpose, the introduction, and all the directions you need to follow in order to do the lab. There's even a ch couple check boxes in here to help you really know and understand what to do. And we'll go over this a few more times in class as well. Get used to using Schoology because we will be using Schoology for a lot of things. Like I said, when we do labs, I'm not going to give you a physical paper to write on for the labs. You'll be writing that in your lab notebook, but the directions will be found on Schoology. All right, so in the lesson, I want to talk about this resources because it's really important. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this 1.1, so this less, unit one, lesson one resources. Um, in here, what I do with this folder is I just dump a whole bunch of stuff dealing with this topic. So this may be stuff we cover in class. This may be stuff we don't cover in class, but it all pertains to the lesson and the learning targets associated with this lesson. So you can see here that um, here, there's a presentation. This might be the notes or the PowerPoint, the lecture that I posted up in class. I'll post that in here. Here's a video. Uh, if there's relevant YouTube videos or other videos that I find online, they say, hey, watch this. It's really good. If you're a visual learner, this is, these are very useful for you. Um, here's a simulation. So if you click on that simulation, it actually allows you to manipulate something. It might be an online simulation where you can control and do different things to help you really understand a, a topic. There's also chapters from the textbook. Like I said, I don't require you to check out a textbook, but you can. And if you're a textbook reader, you find a textbook very useful, I post all that content here so you know kind of some, a certain chapters that you can read to get ahead. And then like I said, I also post the e-textbook because the physical and the e-textbook are not the same, I post both in case you want to use one or the other. So really quickly, I want to show you this must viewed item. So you notice that we've seen these check boxes in a few folders. Um, they said there's certain things you must complete. Well, this one says you must actually do something. So this is the completion rule that you must follow. And this is what I'm checking you up on. Certain times I might say, hey, go home and watch this video. And I want to make sure that you actually watched the video. So I'll put a little completion rule here. Now it says must view this item. So you as a student, when you click on this and actually watch the video, once you're done with the video, this checkbox will turn green and say you completed it. And I can see that and you can see that. So you kind of know certain things on Schoology you really need to do or are really forcing you to do. So this video might, you know, for example, the video right now that you're watching, I believe, is probably how the completion rule. So when you're done watching it, go back and look and it'll say, hey, you completed this task and that's awesome. All right, really quickly, I'm going to go back just a few pages. Um, I'm going to go back one. So here's the lesson folder. I'm going to go back again. And here is the unit folder. So here, back at the unit, again, this is an overall topic in class. Um, you can see here's a few more lessons. And then finally, the, the test page. So here's the unit one test page, just really quickly to point this out. If you click on that in here, there will be more content than this. I'll probably post a review study guide for the test in this folder, as well as some other study options, maybe a review game or other things that might be useful or pertains to you. Um, and then also I'll post the test. Now this won't be open to you until testing day because you need to take tests in class, but we do take tests online and that's designated by this puzzle piece. So we will be taking tests on our devices or on the Chromebooks. Uh, I realize that sometimes it's inconvenient for some of you, but it is important that we do it in class. Taking tests online, gives you immediate feedback, it gives me immediate feedback. You're not waiting for me to grade it using a Scantron or physically. Uh, and also, I want to show you where a lot of this testing information goes to uh, in just a minute. So I'm going to go back all the way to the top level of the class. I just follow the cookie crumbs at the top. So here we have the course resources, all of the unit folders, and then the final exam. So here the final exam, when we get to that point, will be a lot like that test folder. It will have the final exam in it, which won't be accessible until final day, but it will also have some good resources when we get to that point to help you study for the final, the final study guide, and so on and so forth.
All right, going over to the left side page, these are some contents that you'll have in your um, Schoology page. And that is, uh, these are some important things to help you use. One is the updates. Again, this is kind of that, that feed that you would see. Uh, so I can post updates, say, you know, little reminders. Hey, don't forget to turn your assignment. Hey, check out this cool video. I'll post some updates every once in a while. Over here, the gradebook will not be useful for you on Schoology. Don't check the Schoology gradebook. There may be some grades in there, but this is not the main gradebook for the class. The main gradebook for the class is found on uh, the parent portal or student portal. So don't use the gradebook here. What you should use, and what I really want to point out, is this mastery section. So right now, this mastery section is empty for me because I don't have any students in this class. This is just a fake class. But I do want to show you what the mastery section will look like to you. So I'm going to go ahead and find an example page. So here's an example page of a mastery section. This is what mastery section will look like for you as it slowly fills. What mastery is, is, is it's just a guide to tell you how you are doing on certain learning targets in the class. Um, so my class, I'll give you learning targets and say, hey, this is these are the topics, the targets that you really need to hit or really understand in the class. And if you're doing well on these learning targets, then you're doing well in the class. So if you're wondering where I'm pulling that data from, it's right here. So as you do tests and assignments or assessments, um, whether that be summative assessments, whether I ask or talk to you, these things update periodically. So this person here in one of my classes is doing really good on certain learning targets. So you can see here, it tells you what that learning target is. Here's learning target 3.3. What that means is that this target came from unit three, lesson three. So that's really cool. If you wanna know where to go and get information for this learning target to study from it or really do better on it, you can know where that is. It also lists the targets here it tells you exactly what that target is so you know what you what you need to know now over here it tells you the percent you did on this so this person's doing really good on this learning target and it tells you where that data was pulled from so this was pulled from the unit 3 test so it makes sense it's a unit 3 learning target it was pulled from the unit 3 test I'm gonna scroll down a little bit so you can see it shows you all the learning targets here oh here's a learning target that was not only on the unit 3 test but it was reassessed on the unit 5 test and this person's still doing really good on that target. That's what I really want to see. I really want to see that you really understand a target and not only do you know it now, but you know it in the future. So this is a thing to look at. I'm going to keep scrolling down because it's going to show, eventually it's going to go all the way down and show things that aren't so good. So this person is doing phenomenal on a lot of learning targets. Okay, so here we start to see some lower learning targets. This person towards the beginning um, on unit one, lesson three, didn't really understand this learning target right here. This person needed help maybe calculating density, mass, or volume of an object. He or she didn't do horrible, they just only got about 75% on it. Now this is only assessed on one unit. It could be assessed on future units, so this learning target percentage could go up, maybe, or this person can maybe take initiative and get this target up themselves. You can go and learn the content. You know where to look. It's in unit one, lesson three. Uh, you can come in, you can talk to each other. But again, you scroll down and it, it's gonna order it from, from best to worst. So what I wanna point out to you is that this is where you really wanna focus. This is where you really wanna go. You wanna go in and say, oh, these are learning targets I don't really understand. This person has no achievement levels for this item. So this item was assessed, but this person didn't do good at all on this learning target. So this is learning target 1.2, and that's just found in unit one, lesson two. So if you wanna know where to find materials for this unit learning target, you can go and find that. And it says here, this person needs to work on knowing the location, charges and mass, mass of each subatomic particle that make up the atom. So this, this is where you really wanna focus. This is where you really wanna go, okay, I need to work on this. So how do I work on it? Well, I'm gonna go back to Schoology and look up this unit, unit one, lesson two. I'm gonna look at those resources in there. I'm gonna really focus on understanding that material. I'm gonna do anything I can. I'm gonna look in my lab notebook at old assignments and make sure I truly understand them. Do anything you can to get those up. And then you'll come in and you can reassess on those targets and these will go up as you reassess. So that's what's really cool, and this is one of the last things I wanted to point out. If you ever have any questions on Schoology, you're welcome to come and, and talk to me about it. I would love to help you out. You can also send an email and do anything. So this is Schoology, and this is how Schoology is used in the classroom. We'll be using it a lot, so get used to using it.
All right, students, so the last thing I want to show you is just the app version. So I'm just here. I'm actually using an Android but device, but it could be very, it should be very similar for the iPad device as well. So I'm going to come in here and open up Schoology. It's a little bit slow in this video, so it might be running along as I'm talking, but I, you know, we'll go ahead and deal with that. So as I jump in here to Schoology, the first thing I see is the recent activity. This is the, the feed that you see, kind of like I said, the Facebook feed that you see. So this will be where you'd see posts from me or your other teachers or even the school uh, about different things happening around the school or in the class. So there is a top button up here. You can come and see recent activity as well as upcoming. If you click on upcoming, it actually shows you the, the different things that are upcoming from your calendar. So again, if you have calendar items, for me, I like to post calendar items such as bring your lab notebook, lab notebook due, unit one test. This is for all of your classes. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the left-hand tab. Again, I'm using an Android device. It might be slightly different for your iPad or iPod um, or iPhone, but kind of the relative things are the same. So the really, the only thing you need to focus on here for my class is the courses tab. You come and click courses, and it will have all of your courses listed there. So you want to find the appropriate course. So I'm going to go to the appropriate course and click on that course. Um, I'm clicking on Poppleton Science. This is just a general class. So here you can see all of the items for the course. So if you watch the first part of this video, it's all the same. Those folders are all there. Those materials, that material section is there. So the course resources tab is there at the top. There's the unit one folder. Notice it says must complete. So it's showing you that there's some item in there that you need to get done. So again, clicking on course resources, all of those items are in there. Now, I just want to give you a quick warning. Here at Centennial, there is a web filter. If you're using the wireless, a wireless device, there is a filter for wireless devices that will block certain content. I'm not sure exactly why certain contexts certain content is blocked and I'll tell you the truth I don't think our IT department is quite understanding why because we outsource this to a external source and so our IT department is working really hard to try to fix a lot of these things and it may take a while to fix so certain things may not work on the device um, especially if you're using the school wireless if you're using 3g or 4g I don't recommend it because you're using your data but if you are you're welcome to do that and it should work or you can hop on a Chromebook or a computer that's in the classroom so here's the material section all those things are in there they're all links like I showed you before I'm gonna go back to the materials tab so I'm clicking that back button towards the top middle here's all the unit content so I'm gonna click on unit one uh, I believe in the iPhone version if you click on a folder it doesn't take you to a new it doesn't take you to a new page it actually just extends the tabs down so it kind of creates a ladder tree but it's the same concept so you can see here here's all the content I'm gonna go to lesson one again um, the reason I'm showing you this again is because I, I just want to show you what it might look like on your phone when you click on certain content. So again, you can see the must complete. There's, a, there's an item in there that must get done. We'll get to that in a minute. But let's say we're doing a lab in class and you're using your device. The lab, you can click on the lab. I'm going to go ahead and click on ionic versus covalent. And it will actually show you the directions and the things you need to do for the lab. So here's the directions, here's the purpose, the introduction. Uh, sometimes it shows pictures, there could be a video in here maybe. It shows you all of that content that you can kind of scroll through and get to. Even those check boxes are in here. This is one of my favorite things about this. As you're going through the lab, if you want to make sure that the item was done, you can actually check box certain items just to, to show that they have been completed. So you can see them slowly being check boxed here. Uh, and I love that. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the Schoology back button at the top left page, or you can click the back button on the Android device, but I click that Schoology back button on the top left, um, which is going to take me back a page. I can see here that I have a must complete item, so I'm going to go and find that item that I need to complete in the resources tab, and here's all my resources, including the video. Just so you know, once you watch the item or once you do the item, it might not update right away. You actually have to reload the page, which you can see at the upper right hand corner there's that little double arrow pointing to itself that's the reload the page once you reload the page that item will become viewable again so that's the material section and click on the top part here that says materials at the top it tells you a lot of things it says updates upcoming gradebook attendance you won't see some of these um, and most of them don't apply to you um, I'm just gonna click on the back button until I get back to my materials page so back back to unit one and get back to my materials page. Again, when we take tests or quizzes, you can take it on your device. Sometimes I might force you not to, but sometimes I might let you do it. So I'm gonna click on the unit one test, and you can see in here, 
that there's the test that you can actually click on. And once you click on it, it will, it will let you take that test as well as view a few items about that test. So here, here's the questions. And actually, this, this, is the, these, this is me editing the questions, but you would see something that looks more like this. I'm gonna click on preview. So because I'm the moderator of this, it looks a little bit different. But let me click on preview. This is what you would see, which is say, begin test or quiz. You can click on that. Uh, it tells you how many attempts you've made and how many attempts are remaining. And then you would just go ahead and follow along and click on the different items here. So here's my first question, uh, as well as the multiple choice part. It has pictures. Like I said, it could have video. It could have response points. So this is really cool because you can, you can do this in the class. You can do this on your device, a device that you're really used to. Again, if you have any questions, if you're really struggling with understanding the materials or understanding things, come and look at Schoology. If you have any questions about Schoology and you really need help with it, come and talk with me because all this stuff is useful. So that's the app version of Schoology. I just wanted to show you that really quickly. All right, guys, this is the end of my video. We covered everything dealing with Schoology. We covered the course resources folder. We covered the unit and the lesson folders. We covered how to see the different resources and stuff, um, as well as the mastery section. Don't forget about the cool mastery section. And we'll talk about this more as we go along in class and I'll make you guys do each and every one of them. But thanks for bearing with me. I know this is kind of a long video. It's the first one, but I really wanted to get that stuff done. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Thanks, guys.